My name is John Nielsen Gammon, College Station, Texas. I'm the Texas State Climatologist, Professor of Atmospheric Sciences at Texas A&M University, and the Director of the Southern Regional Climate Center. Chairman Perry, Chairman King, and committee members, let me say at the outset I hold deep sorrow for the victims of the Hill Country floods this month, their families and friends, and everyone else who's been touched by this disaster. In the interest of time, I'm going to hit the key points of my written testimony here. Uh, I was appointed the Texas State Climatologist by Governor Rick Perry in the year 2000. The mission of the office is to help the state of Texas make the best possible use of weather and climate information. The Office of the State Climatologist, or OSC, has no statutory responsibilities for disaster planning and response. Indeed, there is no enabling legislation for the OSC. The office was created at Texas A&M by Governor Briscoe in 1973 in response to a pullback from NOAA from state-level climate services. We receive no direct baseline funding through the state budget. Our operating budget is provided by Texas A&M University. We also receive occasional funding from state agencies for particular projects. Given my own scientific background and experiences, I've made the focus of the office extreme weather in Texas, particularly droughts and floods. Much of this research and service is directed toward understanding extreme rainfall risks, which in turn can inform planning and preparedness activities. In my testimony, I highlight a few examples, and I provided a more detailed list as an addendum to this testimony. In 2005, we analyzed every rainfall event in Texas from 1948 to 2002 that produced at least 20 inches of rain. There were quite a few such events. We also looked at computer simulations with rainfall in one particular event that happened to be the July 2002 event that John Honoré just mentioned. We found that for events like this, it was not possible to predict the locations of extreme rainfall at the county level a day or two in advance with computer models, no matter how good the data is. Uh, I also worked directly with state and local agencies when requested, such as TM, ERCOT, the PUC, the Railroad Commission, and TCQ, and TWGB. For the Harris County Flood Control District, we looked specifically at the new numbers from NOAA Atlas 14, which is the document that lays out how much rainfall you expect in a 100-year event, and considered whether those numbers were too high for southeast Texas because of Hurricane Harvey skewing the statistics, or alternatively, whether they were too low because of climate change. We concluded it was some of both. The 100-year amounts are probably overestimates for the present-day climate, but in three or four decades, the climate will catch up. We later broadened our study to look at all the south and southeast United States and found that overall the amount of rainfall with a 1% chance in any given year has increased by about 15% over the past several decades. What particularly concerns me are the implications for all the places outside of southeast Texas, like Kerr County, that didn't get a Harvey bump in their statistics. For them, the official 1% annual rainfall numbers and floodplain extents are likely already too small because they assume there's been no trend in extreme rainfall. There are things going on right now that try to fix the problem. Uh, NOAA has work in progress, for example, due to their own study mandated by Congress. Uh, but the TWB has con contracted with me to develop new extreme rainfall return values for Texas that take historic trends into account. I brought in colleagues from A&M and from Rice University to help on the project. We're testing out some strategies we think will produce more reliable numbers than what NOAA will be coming up with. We're in the final stages of that study now, and we expect the results to be available sometime in the fall. Now I wish to talk specifically about the Hill Country floods and some recommendations regarding them. Um, this being Texas, there are plenty of past floods in this very river basin that in different parts of the basin rivaled or exceeded what happened on July 4th at or upstream of Comfort. July 1869, September 1915, July 1932, August 1978, and July 1987. More broadly, various historic precipitation totals in the hill country are sobering, keeping in mind that the Guadalupe River flood was caused by 10 to 15 inches of rain and the floods near Mason County and Leander were produced by about 20 inches. September 20, 1921, east of Austin, 36 inches of rain in 18 hours, a United States record at the time. July 1932, Mountain Home, about 20 miles upstream, 19.6 inches in six hours, over 33 inches in 24 hours. May 1935, north of Dehanus, 21.8 inches in less than three hours. 
June 1948, Sycamore Creek, 36 inch total. June 1954, Pandale, 35 inch total. August 1978, between Hunt and Medina, over 48 inch total rainfall over two plus days. Based on a simple count of these events, we should expect a 35 inch rainstorm, which would be well over a thousand year event, somewhere in the area on average every two decades. Now that doesn't seem possible if it's a thousand year event, but keep in mind it's a thousand year event at any given particular location, and every individual location has its own odds. Regarding weather warnings, getting warnings is one thing from the Weather Service. Determining the proper action is another. Sometime in the middle of the night, the situation changed from there's a flash flood, appropriate action is to stay indoors and not drive, to there's a flash flood, appropriate action is to seek higher ground if you're less than 20 feet above the river, or then less than 25 feet, or less than 30, or possibly less than 50, as the situation evolved. And the weather warnings did not keep pace with that threat and with the change in action necessary. But during the past uh, 23 years, there's been 111 flash flood or flood warnings issued by the National Weather Service specifically for Hunt, Texas. It's critical that any future warning system clearly identify the appropriate action to take and that action needs to have a reasonable probability of actually being necessary under the circumstances or people will again start ignoring um, the warnings. Um, and furthermore, uh, that action to be supplemented by education on which places are at risk and what to do, how to evacuate at any given location. Uh, regarding better data and models, I'll focus on models of the atmosphere that predict precipitation. The Weather Service runs several models of uh, short range to long range. The shorter range models have higher resolution, can actually resolve thunderstorms. Uh, most private companies don't run their own models. They take the NWS models and forecasts and apply them specifically to customer needs. Uh, with the threat of extreme rainfall a day or two in advance, or even understanding the rainfall potential during the event, it's remarkable to me how poor the National Service models were at providing a 24 or 48 hour warning of this event. Probably other models didn't do much better. Part of the problem is that in Texas, the air that makes extreme rainfall enters the state from over the Gulf or northern Mexico, where observations are scarce or of lower quality. I've heard the key tip-off of heavy rain potential was the Thursday morning weather balloon launch from Del Rio. Why Del Rio in particular? Believe it or not, Del Rio is the only upper air station along the Texas border between El Paso and Brownsville, a distance of over 700 miles. It's worth considering whether additional observations along our border, of what's coming into the state above ground level, would improve short-term forecasts of extreme rainfall and severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. I believe that they would. It's possible to do experiments with computer models to test the impact of different observing systems on the forecast and then put in the systems that make the most sense. Among the technological options are profilers from the ground that measure moisture, temperature, and wind aloft, and having additional information from three or four sites may well have narrowed the area of flood risk considerably. Looking even more broadly, the Department of Atmospheric Sciences my department has been developing an idea to host a Texas Hazard Weather Interagency Coordination Center, which would help coordinate meteorologists from various agencies, including TDM, GWB, and other agencies on a longer time scale than the primary concern of TDM, which would be looking from two to 14 days and up to seasonal outlooks. We would look closely with TDM, and TDM would take over once, once emergencies were was impending. So thank you for your attention. I'll be looking forward to answering your questions. Thank you.